rational expressions. In our first play, we see that x squared has been divided out with x squared, and now we have an equivalent statement. Let's test it. We're going to plug in a 2 for x and see if this is true. 5 sevenths equals 1 third? That's a foul ball! There's no way those are equivalent statements. Let's remember, you cannot divide out from a sum or a difference. All right, let's take a look at the next play. Was it a hit or a foul ball? Plug in a 2 for x and verify. Zero equals zero, it's a hit! All right, guys, let's remember, when you don't have instant replay, you can always verify just by plugging in a value for x. Woo, this is a close call. 2x divided by 2x. In the numerator, we have 2x times x plus 3. That seems okay. In the denominator, 2x plus 9. That one's a foul ball. We see the numerator, that would have been okay, but that denominator, 2x plus 9, that should have been hugged out. You gotta take all of it or none of it. Let's go. Last one is yours to check. And it's out of here. That's a hit. Woo! Now that we have these rules, we can simplify rational expressions. Look at this first one. This just seems like a review of exponent rules. Well, look at this. We got 70 divided by 7. Well, we know that's just 10. And then we've got x cubed divided by x. Well, how many x is on top? 3. How many x is on bottom? 1. How many divide out? 1. So we have x squared left on top. There's no other y, so we're just going to have y squared. We get 10x squared y squared. Are these equivalent expressions? Yes, except we do, we're dividing by 7x. There's an x in the denominator. Thou shalt not divide by 0. So x cannot equal 0. Go try the next one. Check your work. Make sure that you restricted x can't equal 0, y can't equal 0, because they were in the denominator. Looking over at example 3 here, can I divide out those x's? No, because we can't divide out part of a sum or a difference. We got to hug it out. So first things first, let's factor out that denominator and see if we can divide anything out. Well, look at it now. Is there anything I can divide out? Yeah, I have four plus x divided by x plus four. Commutative property of addition means those are equivalent. They're out of here. I just divided out my entire numerator. Or did I? I still have a one up there divided by x minus three. Is that my final answer? No! We still need to state our excluded values. We have an x plus 4 and an x minus 3 in the denominator, so we have to exclude x equals negative 4 and 3. All right, get after it. You know what to do. Let's factor that numerator. All right, what do we have to say that n plus 1? You're out of here. Equals n plus 7 simplified. But you know what? I like to say simplify, but do not tell a lie. What happens if n were negative 1? Those would not be equivalent statements. That's why we have to state our excluded values. Number five, let's go ahead and simplify. Divide out those 12s. Did you do it? Well, you can't do it, right? We need to hug that denominator out. All of it goes or none of it goes. Now, mind you, we can still simplify this. Look at the denominator. We can factor out a three and then we'll be able to simplify. Okay, really trying to make a point here. Can we divide the fours out now? No, hug this out. Every sum and difference should be hugged out. All of it goes or none of it goes. What's our excluded value? Negative four. Are you feeling lucky on this next one? Factor and simplify. Okay, how many of the x plus twos divide out? Only one will divide out. Take a look at number seven. What can we do? GCF, for example, in the numerator, I can pull a three n out. I want you to finish seven, eight, and nine. Come back and check once you're done. Check it out. I hope you got a triple. Did you notice in number seven that when we divide those n's out, we have to exclude n equals zero? Look at this next one. What's different? Now we're multiplying rational expressions. We deal with these basically the same way. Let's check it out. Oh, I got an x minus 13. I better hug those out. Okay, we got rational expression times rational expression. That's really just one big rational expression, right? So anything I have in common with the numerator and denominator, I can divide out. So there goes the x minus 13, woo! And we can divide out these x's. 
looks like we simplify to 11, <gasps> but we have to make sure to state our restrictions. X can't equal 13 and zero. Number 11, let's factor first. Well, check out the factoring here. I had to use GCF on both numerators. In the first rational expression, I pulled out an eight, and in the second, I pulled out an M, leaving me with M times N minus one. Now what? What can I divide out? Remember, two rational expressions being multiplied together is just like one big fraction. So anything in common with the numerator and denominator, I can divide out. So M minus one and M minus one, out of here. M plus three, M plus three, out of here. Anything else? M. That just leaves me with eight divided by two, which is four. Go state your restrictions. Did you get all of them? I had to exclude M equals zero, negative three, and one. All right, I was excited to get in here on multiplying rational expressions. Let's factor that denominator in the second fraction. All right, looks like we're ready to divide out. Can we divide out three minus P and P minus three? No, there is no commutative property of subtraction, but hey, I have another little something up my sleeve. You know what we can do? Factor out a negative one. What you say? Let's take a look. All right, be careful here. Are they equivalent now? Well, I have negative three plus P and all I need to do now is use commutative property of addition, which is P plus negative three or P minus three. Now we're ready to divide out. P minus three divides with P minus three. Remember, it doesn't matter where they are, just so long as you take something from the top, divide it with something from the bottom. Next, I can divide out one of the P's from P and P squared. Anything else left to divide out? I don't think so, let's write it. Remember, simplify but do not tell a lie. What values are restricted from the original problem? Okay, so the restrictions, P cannot equal zero, three, or eight. Couple more clarifying thoughts. Can we divide out the eights? No, because that P minus eight in the denominator is hugged out, all of it goes or none of it goes. Should you distribute the seven in the denominator? You could, but why would you? It's easier to find restrictions in factored form. Don't go any further than you have to unless you have a really good reason to. What? Divide. I like this. All right, here's the cool thing about it. We really are just going to be multiplying still because when we divide by a fraction, what do you do? Multiply by the reciprocal. You got it, multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. I want you to make it to the pros. So every time you see a division problem, I want you to keep that first fraction, write it down, and then multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Once we're there, you're back to multiplying rational expressions. You're ready to go. Whew, we have it changed to multiplication and we have it factored. So we're ready to divide out. But wait, there's something slightly different on this one. It started as a division problem and we were dividing that entire second fraction. Whoo, wait a second. Thou shalt not divide by zero. Therefore, everything in that second fraction is a restriction because we were dividing by the second fraction. So before I divide anything out, I like to go ahead and state all of my restrictions so I don't lose any. In this case, this would cause division by zero, but remember that this was originally being divided by that fraction. Therefore, anything in the numerator or denominator of the second fraction is a restriction. So from our first fraction, x cannot equal zero. From our second fraction, remember to look at the numerator and denominator. So x cannot equal zero, x cannot equal four from the numerator, which of course we also have in the denominator, but I want you to notice that I needed to check the numerator and then X cannot equal one. Now that I have all of the restrictions written, it's time to divide everything out and simplify my expression. Okay, ready to try for your own home run? Look at that next problem. A lot of factoring has to go on, but remember the steps. Keep the first fraction, multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction, factor everything, state your restrictions, remember to include everything from the second fraction, and then divide out and simplify. Check it out, did you get that home run? This simplifies to x minus two divided by x plus two. 
But wait, did you get all the restrictions correct? Remember, you have to restrict the entire second fraction. So that means we were restricting x equals 2, x equals 3, x equals negative 8, and x equals 3 again. And we have to restrict the denominator in the first fraction. So that means we have to restrict x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. Oh, you're getting these steps. Go to 15. as I was factoring here, I had this x minus 1 up in the numerator, and I really would like to divide that out. Well, we had negative x plus 1 in the denominator. If we factor out that negative, we can make it look like x minus 1 and divide those out. Let's state our restrictions and simplify. Well, it looks like we get 2x minus 7 divided by negative 1. I can divide that negative 1 through and get negative 2x plus 7 with restrictions at x equals 1 and 0. I think you're ready to go play ball. That's out of here!